For data scientists, Jupyter Notebooks are the de facto tool for performing rapid data analysis. And you might have seen in our previous videos that Qflow deployments include services for spawning and managing Jupyter Notebooks. Let's take a look at what a notebook can do and how to set one up. If you want to check out the documentation directly, check out the link below to read more about setting up notebooks on Kubeflow. Notebooks on Kubeflow are a great place to start with Kubeflow. You can take a smaller data set, train it, and serve your model using notebooks. While you could run a Jupyter notebook locally, there are some amazing benefits that Kubeflow hosted notebooks give you. Namely, you have better integration with other Kubeflow components. In other words, notebooks integrate well with the rest of the infrastructure for things like accessing other services in the Kubeflow cluster via their cluster IP addresses. They also integrate with access control and authentication. Administrators can set up standard role-based access for the entire organization, providing consistent and centralized security. Secondly, it's easy to share notebooks across the organization and configure who can access them because you can deploy them on pods in a Kubernetes cluster. Plus, a lot of common libraries come preloaded in the default notebook image. For example, it includes all the plugins that you need to train a TensorFlow model with Jupyter, including TensorBoard for rich visualizations and insights into your model. And lastly, you can leverage the power of customized compute shapes and GPUs for machine learning that's compute intensive. With notebooks on Kubeflow, you're hosting your notebook on a Kubernetes pod. You can set up as many notebook servers as you'd like in each Kubeflow deployment. Each notebook server can have multiple notebooks, and each notebook belongs to one Kubernetes namespace, which matches a project or a team name. A user can then configure who can access their individual namespace. Let's walk through setup of a Jupyter notebook on Kubeflow. In the Kubeflow UI, click Notebook Servers in the left-hand panel. Choose the namespace corresponding to your Kubeflow profile. Click New Server to create a notebook server. You should see a page for entering details of your new server. Enter a name of your choice for the notebook server. Select a Docker image for the baseline deployment of your notebook server. You can choose from a range of standard images or specify a custom image. You can keep the default CPU allocation, but for CPU intensive jobs, you can choose more than one CPU. Choose the total amount of memory for your notebook server. Finally, by default, Kubeflow provisions a Kubernetes persistent volume, PV, for each of the your data volumes with 10 gigabytes. But you can also configure your own and specify it here. This is to hold your personal workspace for this notebook server. That way, you can retain data even if you destroy your notebook server. Click Launch. You should see an entry for your new notebook server on the Notebook Servers page, with a spinning indicator in the status column. It can take a few minutes to set up the notebook server. When the server provisioning is complete, you should see an entry for your server on the Notebook Servers page, with a check mark in the status column. Next, you can click Connect to start the notebook server. Click Upload to upload an existing notebook, but let's go ahead and create an empty Python 3 notebook. To test our Jupyter installation, we'll run a basic Hello World program, a very simple MNIST classifier, which uses image recognition to classify handwritten digits. And we get an accuracy of 0.9016 back. There you have it, notebooks on Kubeflow. It gives you the same experience you love about Jupyter Notebooks with the added benefits of image extensibility, scalability, access control, sharing, and submitting jobs directly on your Kubernetes cluster. It's the easiest way for you to immediately start experimenting on Kubeflow. You can read more about notebooks on Kubeflow in the link below. And stay tuned for the next episode.